Welcome back YouTube. Today we're going to discuss how to install piston rings. And before we get started, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed to my channel. And if you are not currently a subscriber to my channel, maybe consider subscribing. Uh, anyway, let's get started here. So, you got a new piston, you got a replacement piston, and you need to install the piston rings. Something real quick I wanted to point out. So, you can clearly see I marked this saying intake as this is the intake side and the side that should be installed closest to the intake valve. But if you don't see INT on your piston whenever you take it out of the box, there's typically a little arrow designating that this would be the intake side. And you'll notice that because if there is no marking for some reason, you can see the bevel in here or the relief is larger on the intake side than it is for the exhaust side valve. Anyway, I figured I'd point that out, but let's get started with piston rings. So you're gonna take your rings out of the box, bag, whatever they came in, and you're gonna see a whole bunch of rings. See this funny looking guy right here goes with the two thinnest rings. They're extremely thin. There is two of them. A lot of times they're stuck together. Just carefully pull them apart. You know that these two are going to go right down here in your largest and lowest groove. And now you have the other two in this case. And you might assume, well, these two rings here look a lot alike. Does it really matter which one goes in the first notch and which one goes in the middle? And it does. So you make sure you get this right. A lot of times you'll look at a piston ring and you'll see it has a marking on it. In this case, it has one right there. That usually designates that that's the top. So that ring has to go with the mark facing upward whenever it's installed. Same thing here. This one has a mark on the outside of the ring as well as a really small marking right here letting you know that this is also the top side of the ring and then you need to figure out which one is your compression ring and which one is your secondary compression or scraper ring essentially it's scraping the oil off of the cylinder wall every time it moves up or down. So once you figure out which ring is your top ring, which ring is the middle, and then we obviously know which ones are going to go on the very bottom of the piston here, we're going to go ahead and install them. So in this case, We're going to use this ring right here with the marking on top. And we're just going to slide this into the middle groove here. Come around, pull the ring apart a little bit. that ring is installed temporarily. Now you want to get into, you know, piston ring gap. You want to squeeze the ring as far as you can. Make sure that the ring itself, whenever it's closed, has enough room to completely close. Hence your ring gap. That little notch right there that you see where there's material missing, that's your ring gap. So 
So now we're going to install the upper ring again with the mark facing up. Okay, and now there's something to point out. Whenever you go to install your piston, you're done, you're happy, your rings are installed, you checked your gap, you made sure the rings can properly close up. You see I have both of these marks aligned, that would be terrible. You don't want to install it with the openings of the rings like this or like this you want them to be 180 degrees opposite from each other so do a full spin around this opening's clocked over here come to the other side of the piston now this opening's over there that makes for good compression that makes sure you don't have blow by or oil passing directly past the rings as I would defy the point of the rings. You might as well have no piston rings at that point. Now when it comes to your oil rings, your nappy ring, nappier ring, however it is you want to say it, it's an oil ring. And careful here. Saw this guy into the lower notch. Always want to make sure that's installed first. around install the first of the lowest oil ring Sorry, I got hung up for a second. And same thing will apply here. So there's going to be three total parts to this lowest ring. You want to make sure that the opening of the very lowest ring doesn't match the upper oil ring. So you want them to be apart from one another. And then there's an opening on the center. So we're going to make sure that this is clocked away from the opening. And that's pretty much how you do it. Now ideally, whenever you go to install this, you use a piston ring compressor. It's a little sleeve. Goes around the piston. Squeezes the rings nice and tight. Allows you to slip the cylinder over top of the new piston and rings without damaging your piston rings either you know eight ten twelve bucks amazon ebay harper freight advance auto AutoZone, any of the above whatever you have available just to make sure that you get everything installed correctly if you don't happen to have one you can go to set the cylinder down get it to the point where it's at the top ring and you can use something like a screwdriver very carefully compress the ring get the cylinder over the compression ring get it down to this point repeat the process making sure that your rings are not aligned together that is extremely important. Like I said again, when you go to install this, this is not what you want to see. You're going to have oil consumption, blow by, compression loss, 
and it's just a bad day. So please make sure whenever you install your rings, you check to make sure they're oriented correctly so the openings are not aligned like you see here. And whenever you're done, you should have good compression. You shouldn't have a bunch of oil consumption. And that's about it. We're going to make this video nice and simple. That's how you install rings. If you do go to install the ring and you find that the ring cannot compress because the ring gap is too close, they sell a little tool that you can sit on your workbench and it's kind of like a grinding wheel you'll take your ring set it in there you'll grind away some material I mean you could do this with sandpaper you could do it a bunch of different ways where there's a wheel there's a way I'm just mentioning the proper tool and then you'll file away some ring material giving you a proper ring gap there's also reference to exactly how much ring gap you want to have depending on the machine that you are building or rebuilding and you can always pull up the actual specs as reference but I typically just go ahead and install the rings if there's enough gap we're good if there's not enough gap we just remove material until there is thanks for watching I hope this helps you whenever you go to rebuild the top end for the first time if you have any questions let me know have a great day.